welcome to our quest through the veiled night. Chrétien de Trois, the Grail poem. They spoke of this and that together, and from a room there came a squire, and he passed by between the fire and bed, where sat the lord and knight, and bore a lance of purest white, holding it by the lance's center, and all those there saw him enter. The white lance, its gleaming wood, and from the tip the drop of blood, the white lance, its gleaming wood, and from the tip the drop of blood. The white lance, its gleaming wood, and from the tip the drop of blood that issued forth and from its end did to the squire's hand descend drop on drop of per vermilion the youth who had but come upon the place he was that very night refrained from questioning outright how this wonder had come about for he recalled nor did he doubt the ruling government had taught that as a full-fledged knight he ought to keep from speaking over much for ready questioning as such led swiftly in an ill direction so the youth asked no question two more squires then appeared candlestick in hand drew near of gold and inlaid with nilio with the candlesticks and lo the squires they were passing fair and every candlestick borne there ten lighted candles thus displayed and they were followed by a maid fair neat and dressed with elegance who bore a grail in her two hands and they were followed by a maid who bore a grail in her two hands and they were followed by a maid who bore a grail in her two hands and as she entered on their tail and bearing in her hands the grail so great a brightness shone around and cast its light the watchers found the candlelight grow dim as far off dims the brightness of a star when the sun rises or the moon. After her there followed soon, a maid bore a silver plate. The grail, which went ahead in state, was of pure gold set with gems, such precious stones as diadem, display the richest to be found. Beneath the sea or underground, doubtless of much greater worth, than all the other stones on earth the gems that from the grail shone from one room to another gone in the same manner as the lance before their eyes all did advance and the youth he saw them pass but the grail dared not alas ask whom with it one served for in his heart he now observed ever his wise teacher's warning and this is just a part of Chrétien de Troyes poems about King Arthur and the Holy Grail there are four books Parsifal is a poor innocent country bumpkin who sets off on a quest to become a knight. He finds a castle and is taught the ways of knighthood by the reigning Gornament. Those ways are of silence. At his training castle, he learns of the grail, never a holy grail and it is not clearly defined by the poet Chrétien de Troyes. The first castle the young Sir Parsifal stops at is the Fisher King's Castle, which is a clever play 
on words. This portion of the poem demonstrates first that Parsifal had no idea what his quest was, and yet he set out on it. Second, that the rigid following of rules or dogma is just as ill as a loose tongue. Parsifal found the grail straight away. He went to the Fisher King right from the beginning. He left without asking any questions, let alone the right question. It took him many adventures and years before he realized that he had already found the Holy Grail. He spent the rest of his life trying to find the Holy Grail again. I also am on a quest. I read somewhere that you have to believe in something. I believe in my quest for a grail. That's small g, two a's, an r and an l in there. I have no clue, just like Sir Parsifal, what that grail is. I just know I'm on the quest. I hope you will join me on a quest through a veiled night and see what is revealed to me.